Friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Time for another fragrance buying guide. The fragrance line we're taking a look at today is none other than Dolce & Gabbana's The One, which by and large has way more hits than it does misses. So in today's video, I'm gonna run through each one of the fragrances in the line, including a couple of the discontinued ones. I'm gonna let you know what I think about them, let you know which ones are best, which ones you probably don't really need to mess with, and just give you the whole rundown so that when it comes to Dolce & Gabbana's The One, you know what's up. So let's jump into it. And uh, before we jump into Dolce & Gabbana's The One, how about we jump into my fragrance line? That's right, uh, Blue Ridge, Terra Nova, my two new fragrances, and also the relaunch of Jet Black Enigma is on. These two are selling like crazy and they're popping into stores near you very soon, going into perfumanias nationwide, oh boy. But if you wanna save a little money on them, check them out at the link in the description and use the code GENTSENSE for 20% off. They're on Michael Mullow's website. That's where you'll save a little money over retail. Also did a video on those on the channel, so feel free to search that up. Blue Ridge, Terra Nova, Jet Black Enigma, learn a little more on the scents. Now I'm not going to include the collector's edition bottles in this lineup. We already have a lot to talk about. So yeah, uh, let's just jump into it with the first one, the One Eau de Toilette. So this one came out in 2008 and at discounters as of this video, you can find this for about $30 US. So that's gonna make this one much, much more affordable than some of the other fragrances in the lineup. And this one is by and large, the easiest one to find. So this, when it first came out, absolutely mind blowing. It was fantastic. First time I smelled it, just blew my socks off. I really was just surprised at how immediately I fell in love with this stuff. Huge compliment pulling fragrance as a focus on amber and tobacco. It's warm, it's sweet, it's spicy. It's got this nice opening with grapefruit, ginger, and cardamom. It's got a bit of cedar in the dry down in the base so you get a faint woodiness. It's an amazing, sexy date night fragrance. But it's not all good. Drawbacks, uh, the performance, it's not very nice. Yeah, the performance is not great. The projection is weak. It sits pretty close to the skin early on, so it's not that kind of fragrance that people are gonna be able to easily pick up after you've been uh, wearing it for a few hours. And, and for that matter, the longevity is about a few hours. Still though, for the price, it's a great pickup. I think for 30 bucks, that one is not quite a must own, but it's one that you definitely need to consider. So the next release was this one, The One Gentleman. This came out in 2010. This is discontinued as of now, but you can still find it as of this video. I found it for about $45 US for a 30 mil size bottle. So a lot smaller than this one, but you can still pick it up for now. And this doesn't really have very much at all to do with the original, the one Eau de Toilette. This actually has more of a vague similarity to fragrances like Gucci Envy than it does the one EDT. Leans heavily on the lavender, on the vanilla, with a little bit of fresh pepper in there as well. It is a fragrance that to me comes across gentlemanly. It comes across classy. It's masculine. It's a really versatile scent. You can wear it to the office easily. It's a compliment puller as well. A lot to like about it. It lasts a little longer than the one EDT on my skin, but it doesn't project a huge amount. So it's a fragrance that maybe you'd want to check out if you enjoy discontinued fragrances or if you're looking for a classy scent that has a, a subtle projection to it. After that, 2012, the one sport. Now, this one is also discontinued and it goes for typically over a hundred dollars, at least from what I found looking it up. And this kind of sucks. That doesn't kind of suck, it does suck. Mainly because of the performance. The performance is weak, 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 weak. So I know I said the one Eau de Toilette, the one gentleman, that they don't have great performance, but this one is the worst and it isn't close. This fragrance off my skin, mm, you could probably measure the longevity in minutes instead of hours. Now the scent itself is fine. It's kind of what you would expect looking at the note breakdown. It's aquatic, watery, fresh, with an aromatic uh, touch to it in the opening. Little hints of spice and musk as it dries down. It's a solid gem fragrance, a solid casual summertime scent. If it had 
performance and it doesn't. So yeah, simple, clean with barely perceptible performance over a hundred dollars. Absolutely not. Never go for that at that price. Actually, I would just say don't go for it in general. Then we skip a few years and we get to 2015. The one eau de parfum, oh, big boy. This one you can find at discounters for around $50 or so uh, for a 50 mil size bottle. And uh, I gotta say, I loved the eau de toilette when it dropped. I did, but then this came out, it basically made the eau de toilette obsolete. For me, almost no reason to buy the EDT other than the EDT is cheaper, so that's good. This one's a little spicier with a more pronounced amber note to me, especially as it dries down. And that's where some people might prefer the Eau de Toilette, that slight change in the scent profile itself. The performance here is better than the Eau de Toilette. It's not amazing, but it's noticeably better than the original. This is a near perfect date night fragrance. It draws people in when they catch a whiff. They just want to lean in and, and get another and another and another whiff of this stuff. One of the best compliment pulling fragrances ever made. And uh, I got to say, in my opinion, one of the best cool weather designer scents ever made. The One Eau de Parfum. This is a big release. And also 2015 gave us this, the One Royal Night. Now this is an exclusive edition. The first exclusive edition in the the one line and it's made for the middle east market so you're not going to find this at macy's or sephora or ulta or anything like that you're going to have to find this at discounters so fragrance net fragrance buy websites like that or even ebay at discounters as of this video it's uh, about 80 bucks so initial blast here you get more cardamom you get basil so it's going to give you an aromatic slightly green tinged spicy opening and when you very first spray it on you might think ah that's not really all that close to the one eau de parfum you know, it smells a little different, like they've changed up the DNA quite a bit. But as it dries down, it does get more similar to the one Eau de Parfum. One of the big differences, though, between this and the one EDP is the tobacco. The tobacco is gone from the one Royal Night, as far as the official note breakdown goes. Now, you can pick up a little bit of that tobacco feel in here, but it is noticeably uh, brought down a number of notches as compared to how much you can pick it up in the one EDP or EDT. I will say though, the performance of this one, much better than all the fragrances we've talked about so far. It projects more, it lasts longer, it is noticeably stronger. It's another cool weather stunner. The quality is great. It does come across a little bit classier, a little bit more mature than the one Eau de Parfum. Then we scoot up to 2018 and the one gray came out that year. This one is cheap compared to most of the other ones that we've talked about. This one is uh, a lot more affordable. You can get it for about $35. So this one is one of the more derided releases in the ones lineup. A lot of people don't really enjoy this one, but I do. I think the one gray is actually pretty nice. Basically, you could think of this as taking the ones uh, scent profile, the ones DNA, and extracting a lot of that warm sweetness from like the tobacco leaf and the amber. Tobacco leaf is still officially a note. Labdanum is in here as well. So it's not completely devoid of, of that part of the one scent profile, but it's definitely ramped way down. And instead it's made fresher off the top and it's given this classy woody base with vetiver playing a very prominent role. It has kind of an herbal quality to it. Uh, the vetiver has an almost peppery kind of bite as well when you catch a big whiff of it. Really easy going, very versatile, good office fragrance, I think. And if you're looking for a, a fresher take on the one that has a nice classiness to it with great versatility, I think it's worth checking out, especially at the price point. And that same year, we also got the one mysterious night. So another exclusive edition Everything I said about the one Royal Knight carries over to this one. You're not going to be able to find this at Macy's, et cetera, et cetera. This one typically runs a little bit more than the one Royal Knight, usually around $90 at discounters. And this one is a Rose Oud Saffron scent. So if you know what that means, then you're going to have a really good idea of how this is going to smell. If you don't, Rose Oud Saffron are very often used together 
and Middle Eastern style fragrances. They basically go together like peanut butter and jelly if you're in the United States. But if you're in like Europe or something, peanut butter and jelly might sound weird to you. But it's good, I promise. So the saffron and the rose here are very prominent, even right off the top. You can pick it up immediately. Uh, the oud here is not animalic. It's not dirty. It's uh, pretty easy going, you know, slightly spiced woodiness. You've got the ambery warmth in the dry down. So it carries over the same general idea of the ones lineup, or at least most of the fragrances in the ones lineup. It doesn't smell uh, similar to the one Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. It actually smells closer to something like Serge Ops more than words, which is an expensive niche fragrance. Like the one Royal Knight, once again, the performance here is very good, nice projection good longevity and the blend is done very well also. So nothing sticks out like a sore thumb. Solid release, nice stuff. If you're familiar with Saffron Rose Oud fragrances, it might be a little bit redundant for you because it's not really doing anything hyper unique as far as that type of fragrance goes, but it is done really well. 2020, the one Eau de Parfum Intense. Now the name can be confusing because this is the one Eau de Parfum Intense, so you may think, well, they're just doing that evolution again. You had the one Eau de Toilette, then the one Eau de Parfum was a uh, more refined, you know, smoother, deeper, we have already talked about this, version of the one Eau de Toilette, and now they've got the one Eau de Parfum Intense. So that must be the one Eau de Parfum, but ramped up, more performance, right? No, no, actually, they don't smell alike. So this is one of those circumstances where the naming conventions of fragrances in a line don't really necessarily add up to how the fragrance itself smells. So the one Eau de Parfum Intense is not an intense version of the one Eau de Parfum. And this one you can find for about $50. So it's in line price wise with the one Eau de Parfum. This one has a lot of sweet cardamom and benzoin. It has a, a fresh yet somewhat dark neroli off the top as well. Good amount of cypress that you can pick up. So you have this, this woodiness, a slight aromatic tinge to it. As it dries, you get a fuzzy woody cashmere and leather that comes out and that residual sweetness from the opening in the mid that lingers on into the dry down. Another great cool weather fragrance, big compliment puller. I think for the price, this one is a solid pickup, really good. I think that it definitely deserves its spot in the line. That brings us to 2021, the last two releases as of when I'm filming this, the first one, is the one gold. This one you can find for about $45 or so. And the opening here actually smells really good. Ginger and blood orange specifically combined together to give this very brisk, lively, sparkly opening. Then as it dries down, it kind of loses that feeling. You get this amber woody kind of base that you smelled probably 50 other times. To be fair, it doesn't smell bad in the dry down but it does start to feel generic. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is the performance. The performance on this one is pretty weak. Staying power is okay. I mean, you could say it's passable, especially when you compare back to something like the one Eau de Toilette, but then the projection is very weak. So it sits close to your skin. People aren't gonna be able to pick it up very easily unless they're all over you. And it becomes kind of a letdown because when you first spray it on, you're like, oh, what is this? I'm intrigued. And then it's kind of downhill from there. Ultimately, the fragrance doesn't smell bad. It's just, there are a lot of drawbacks, a lot of cons to this one. And when you compare it to the other fragrances in the line, it's one of the weaker ones overall, both in performance and the scent itself. And that takes us to the last one from 2021, the one Luminous Night. This is one of the best. You got the one gold, which is iffy, and then this one, which is a standout. Another exclusive one, hard to find. This one sells out a lot. So uh, this is one that if it pops up at discounters, and you're interested, you better scoop it up. You can put in your email address. Oh, I wanna be notified when the fragrance is in. And then, you know, good luck when it comes in because it's in high demand. Amazing cold weather fragrance. This one is sexy. It is sweet, almost sugary, sticky sweet in the opening because of the note of dates. Then it has that ambery warmth that has that spiciness that you want from a, the one fragrance made for cool weather. And it does it so well. 
A lot of people will tell you this is straight up the best one that the line has ever had. It's immediately appealing when you spray it on. That opening is great and it grows on you more and more. The more you wear it, you just want to wear it again. As it dries down, you get puffs of incense smoke. You get a creamy sandalwood. The stuff is done so well, very smooth. It smells a little bit similar to uh, Initio's side effect, but more masculine and I think more wearable. And also the performance, it's really good. So you don't have to worry about that with this one either. So for me, overall, the best two in the ones lineup is the one Luminous Night and the one Eau de Parfum. Those are the two I would keep if I could only keep two. They're the best. Just underneath that, I would say the one Eau de Parfum Intense. And underneath that, the one Royal Night and the one Mysterious Night. Then the one Eau de Toilette, then the one Gray, and then the one gold of the ones that aren't discontinued and hard to find. That is kind of off the top of my head and, and maybe you catch me on a different day and I say the one Royal Knight is actually right up there with the one Eau de Parfum Intense or, or whatever. But for now, I think I'm gonna stick with it like that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for hanging out with me and listening to me babble on about the one. Let me know which ones you think are best and which ones you wear the most. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later. Thank you.